Without warning, it comes, crashing through the window of your study and mine. I have seen it before, somewhere. It frightened me as a boy, frightened me. Yes, father, I shall become a bat. So I really like this issue. <laughs> so this review is going to be a little bit different. This review is going to be something of a response to some of the other reviews of this issue that I've seen, and really just metal in general. But before I did this review, I watched uh, Underground Geek's review of this issue, I watched Yellow Flashes, and I watched Grand Comics. Um, and I'm also seeing uh, fairly consistently people echoing Diversity in Comics's opinion that metal is essentially just a either a stoner story or that it's just all in good fun. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that those things aren't true, but I think that um, Dark Knight's metal is actually a lot deeper than you might think. And I think that this issue confirms uh, some of the theories that I've had going around in my brain for a while that I wasn't 100% sure about. Basically, I think that the entire Dark Knight's event, the entire metal event, is about how the idea of Bat God uh, warps the DC Universe and warps our understanding of the Batman character. Uh, so I'm not going to go over the plot in detail. Um, there's a lot to go over, frankly. There's a lot of references. Uh, there's a lot of um, things that uh, that we could go over. I'm just... Um, this is actually the second review I filmed, and the first review was 30 minutes of footage, and I just don't think that there's any way that I can edit it down to anything less than 15 minutes, which is what I want to shoot for. So, um, this is the big confrontation of the issue. Basically, you see a... A elderly Batman, a specifically 78-year-old Batman, which Batman debuted in Detective Comics number 27, which came out in 1939, which was 78 years ago. So this is Batman, the actual character. And basically, what I think that Metal is about, Metal is about the tension between the man, Bruce Wayne, and the idea of this sort of... Um, unstoppable force known as Batman. Grant Morrison started uh, this idea called, uh, well, he didn't start it necessarily, but Grant Morrison made popular um, something that came to be known as Bat God, which is a Batman that is just um, so much smarter, so much more put together, so much more disciplined than everybody else basically in the entire world. Um, Grant Morrison's Batman has been to... Where is it? Crap. He has been to the beginning of time and back. He is somebody that has fought gods and won. He is somebody that had uh, survived his own mind being completely destroyed. And what this Batman Lost thing says is that everything that Batman has ever done, every interesting thing, everything that people like about Batman, everything that he's ever done has been because of this guy right here, Barbatos. Barbados is this demonic force that lives in the very pit of the dark multiverse. And according to this issue, everything that has ever happened from the events of... Detective Comics number 27, where we had this guy who ends up falling in acid and dying. A fitting end for his kind, as Batman said. All the events that have ever occurred to Batman have been because... And the event during the events of Return of Bruce Wayne, Batman got sent to the beginning of time. He ended up creating this Bat Tribe, and the Bat Tribe ended up creating the groundwork so that Gotham City would eventually be built, and that it would eventually become this sort of sounding chamber that ensured that Batman would come to exist. We saw this in Batman Return of Bruce Wayne. We saw this in Batman R.I.P. Um, we saw this in Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo's Court of Owls arc. Here you can see Bruce Wayne's ancestor, Alan Wayne, coming to the horrifying realization that in their attempts to stop the Bat Tribe, they have actually only allowed the creation of the sort of emissary of the Bat. And this happened probably a hundred years before Batman ever showed up. 
in Detective Comics number 27, we put a new spin on it where um, the bad guy's death and that one uh, is now a sort of precursor to what happened to the, to the Joker. I think these are supposed to be... We see these uh, symbols. I think these are supposed to be bookmarks uh, in a book. But these are stories that have happened in Batman. Um, I don't know exactly what this is a reference to. But I think this is Revolutionary War era, I guess, Thomas Wayne. I'm not really sure. Um, basically ensuring that a mystical pact is sealed with this woman's blood. Uh, that will increase the influence that Barbados has over Gotham and over Batman. So basically, Barbados shows Batman um, what happens to Batman when Barbados isn't influencing him. So here in this uh, nightmare world, and I don't think this is a reference to anything, and there's no bookmark symbol, which suggests that this story is not one that we should be familiar with. So in this nightmare world, um, Batman uh, showed too much restraint he imposed too many rules on himself and his followers in his war on crime, and so Gotham City becomes a Mad Max-style wasteland. In this next story, here Batman goes too far. He becomes uh, too extreme with the criminals, causing a backlash amongst the criminals that leads to a escape from New York slash the Warriors-style gang warfare that engulfs all of uh, Gotham. In another story, we see that Batman's war on crime has led to this sort of uh, worldwide dictatorship being imposed on Earth that uh, has made it nearly un uninhabitable. And it turns out that this is the very essence of the Dark Universe. That the Dark Multiverse, according to um, Barbados, largely exists because in all these other universes, uh, he was not influencing Batman, and so... Batman's um, flaws and virtues um, were left unchecked, and so they created all these nightmare worlds. Um, there may be some Easter eggs in this panel. Uh, I'm sure there are. But for the most part, the idea is that the, the Dark Multiverse is much more vast than we can even begin to comprehend. And here we see the, the final effect of that, which is that the Dark Knights are um, attacking the Justice League, and, and apparently winning. Um, these are events depicted in the current uh, Bats Out of Hell arc going across several DC titles. I mean, here we have this confrontation right here between the man, Bruce Wayne, who decided to dress up like a bat and defeat crime by punching it in the face, and then we have Barbatos, which is sort of the fan idea of what Batman is, the sort of popular notion of what Batman is, which is that he's unstoppable, which is that he... Um, is three steps ahead of everyone, which is that he can defeat anybody if he has enough time. And he is the guy that was the bat in the original origin story. The one that Frank Miller referenced in Batman Year One. And nobody can be this guy. Nobody can be the idea of Batman as we understand him. Um, you're going to make mistakes. And when, you're as, when you try to do as much as Batman... Your mistakes are catastrophic. But the entire point of Barbados influencing Bruce Wayne, Batman, to become they're the superhero that we know him as, the whole point was to ensure that Barbados could come into the positive multiverse. Um, in the DC Universe, Batman is everywhere. Batman is... Uh, he's in every event. Um, he's widely looked on as... Uh, the authority on just about everything. Um, there's very little that you can't turn to Batman to help you accomplish. Um, his his influence is so great on the DC universe, even though he's just he's just a man. Um, and so what this is saying is that there's this dark force, which like, maybe this dark force is fan expectations. Maybe this dark force is um, overzealous writing. Maybe this dark force is. Is this darkness in all of us that wants to believe that we can actually, this sort of egotism that we can actually be the, that bat god character, that we could be this unstoppable force. But um, in any case, it's, it's not a good thing. 
uh, this Barbados, this guy that makes Batman this unstoppable hero. Um, it's basically evil. And so what happens when a, a regular person is confronted with this kind of evil? Well, you see it right here. Batman is, is confronted with the truth of what uh, Barbados is that, and what Barbados has done, and he can't take it. And we see Batman in a very unusual position of, of weakness, and that causes him to just give in to the, the fiction of the Dark Multiverse uh, and he just stays in these these macabre towers that um, the Dark Knights have constructed in order to bring the Dark Multiverse into the positive verse. Um, so there is there is a lot going on in this comic. It doesn't stand on its own. I'll say that you have to know what's going on in all almost all of the metal uh, main series and tie-ins, and you have to be very very knowledgeable about Batman history. Um, there's things that I'm sure I missed. I know I'm not a perfect Batman expert. I don't know, this is a very dense story. Uh, if you're not a big Batman fan, or if you haven't been reading Metal, I don't think you're going to get a whole lot out of it. But if you... Um, this is the culmination of um, 78 years of Batman's history. Um, here we see... Like I said, here we see a the end of Detective Comics number 27 play out somewhat similarly to uh, the Joker's origin. So does that mean that the Joker is some kind of... I don't know, demonic projection of Barbados. I doubt it means that this guy is a Joker. That wouldn't really make a lot of sense. But I think it does show that the... the story that drives the Joker and the story that drives that relationship is a recurring motif in Batman's history. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, I, you could go, I could go page by page, panel by panel on this and just do a breakdown of everything I think it means. Um, that would take like an hour and a half, and I really don't want to do that. It's kind of late anyway. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things I don't understand. I'm not really sure what the whole thing with the birds flying into the window here is. Um, I think the point is that the, the birds in his life, because the bird tribe is normally the good tribe in the, uh, dichotomy that they set up between bats and birds, usually the bat tribe is bad. But, and the the bird tribe is good, but this whole Barbados thing happened because members of the bird tribe, i.e. the Court of Owls, broke off and became evil. And they made sure that Gotham would be this sort of uh, closed system that would allow first Batman to be created and then through him, um, Barbados would come into this realm. So it was the bird tribe... There we go. It was the bird tribe that was trying to stop Barbados, and they ended up causing it. Meanwhile, Batman, who created the tribe of the bats, is trying to stop this, and he's surrounded himself with um, Nightwing, the Robins, and Superman, who's often mistaken for a bird. And these are the people that try to keep him on the straight and narrow, just as these birds smashing against the window were trying to show him what was up. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think that to write this whole metal story off as being frivolous or being just dumb fun or being a stoner story, I, I just do not... I, I think that misses a lot of the subtleties of it. I think that this is all about how just the very notion of the fan idea of Batman just completely warps the DC Universe. And now we have it so that a literal bat god is taking over the DC Universe using versions of Batman that are better than the heroes that they're copying. I mean, um, it's it's a little bit too perfect. And Scott Snyder has been sort of responsible for building up the whole idea of Bat-God, but he also, I mean, in Metal Number 1, um, the whole Metal event was kicked off by Batman refusing to listen to people, by assuming, by Batman assuming that he could solve the problem where nobody else could, whereas if he had communicated with people, if he had actually um, cooperated with people who knew what they were doing and assumed that he didn't know everything, rather than just trying to do it all himself, um, the entire metal event wouldn't have happened. Uh, I mean, Hawkgirl had all of the answers, and he just flat out didn't listen to her. Um... So Batman is a human. He is, he's a guy that makes mistakes. He's not a guy that can't predict everything. He's a guy that, that can't 
overcome every enemy because he's just a man. Uh, this is about Batman's limitations. It's about Batman as a character, and it's about how the the sort of popular notion of Batman completely throws off everything else in the DC universe. So tell me what you think of my little theory. Tell me what you think of metal. Tell me what you think of, of Bat God and Scott Snyder and uh, whatever else. <laughs> um, in any case, this is Unring Chevron signing off.